welcome to this Marvelicious Toys One Shot. Hi, welcome to Marvelicious Special Edition. Uh, we're here to talk about a little bit of the Hasbro Pulse stuff going on today, so welcome. Yeah, it is Hasbro's Fan First Friday, and we're going to be looking at Marvel Legends. We're suspecting this is going to be the big HasLab reveal. They said, don't miss this one. Big news. So we're going to do a live reaction video here. We're going to watch it, and you can see it down in the corner there. And we're, like, Brady bunching it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see we'll talk through our reactions live as Dwight. And you got to know this is big. Jesse Falcon showing up to this one. Oh, that is oh, big. Wow. Uh, Jesse is the big wig. Yeah, he <laughs> works for Disney, not Hasbro, but he like is, I mean, if, if you think about it, Disney is over Hasbro. He's on the Marvel side saying, do this. Right, yeah, no, that's that's big news. This is, now, let's I feel like this is the... our Comic-Con news, right? It does feel like we're close to Comic-Con time. We're a couple weeks early, but... I was just lamenting last night, Justin, how I'd missed that lazy Wednesday that we always have at Comic-Con, the preview night, like where you get in either the morning of or the night before. I always, we always come in the night before because it's, it's we don't have direct flights, and I get to sleep super long in, in on Wednesday, have coffee and breakfast in bed, and we go downtown to meet you and Daryl and have our traditional like late lunch before the craziness happens, and that's going to be weird not having that. Yeah, I mean, I was just saying the other day how it's like, oh, I'm fine without Comic-Con for a year, but I think that was just because it wasn't Comic-Con time yet. Now that we're getting closer to it, it's like, oh, this sucks. We're not going to Comic-Con this year. Yeah, and you see all your memories come up on Facebook? Hey, they're live now. Oh. All right. So while we're waiting for this to load, what do you guys, any predictions? I'm predicting a Sentinel at $550. That's my price is right Ooh. guess. <laughs> Ooh, how about how tall? I guess Ooh. we kind of have a guess, right? Yeah, if the leg is this big, I, then... How big is that? I mean, you guys are, I mean, is that 6 inches, 12 inches, 18? Oh, man. 18 to 24 range, I would think. Like in that 2 foot range. How big was the other one we got that was the Comic-Con exclusive then showed up later in Toys R Us? That was like oh, 18 hey inches. How's it going? All right, I'm watching Welcome them now. Welcome to the uh, Marvel Fan First Friday on the Hasbro Pulse. We are the Marvel Legends team uh, here, gathered here today with a special guest uh, you see in the middle there. Just to kick things off, I'm, I'm Ryan on the marketing side. Uh, Dwight on the design side. Hi, I'm Jesse on the Marvel side. Hi, Deadpool. Actually, four guests today. So, yeah, thank you for joining, everyone. We're so happy to have uh, Jesse uh, Falcon here, close friend and collaborator uh, from Marvel. So, we have some big Jesse has to share like with a, you guys. There's been a lot of great speculation on uh, there. You know, what we could possibly be talking about. <laughs> Dan Yoon on our marketing Quarantine beard. Twitter bombs, and people are speculating um, it's going to be Comic Con stuff, it's going to be X Men movie stuff. Um, so, before we get into to our big news, we just wanted to, to clear the air a little bit. Uh, I know everyone is so excited for the movie X Men figures that we revealed initially at Toy Fair. So, you're just going to have to. Uh, just want to point out in the background, he does have two so Sentinels carefully placed. And we were planning out how to how to reveal those and do the pre-order this summer. And we were looking at the calendar. And actually, July 14th is the 20th anniversary to the day for the very first X-Men film that came out July 14th in the year 2000. And I still remember, you know, going to the theaters and seeing that uh, on the big screen for the first time. So as part of a, a really special 20th anniversary, stay tuned to The Pulse for more announcements and news uh, next Tuesday, all about X-Men movie stuff. And then speaking about movies... Uh, for you Disney Plus subscribers out there, uh, you know that they are doing the summer movie nights every Friday. They're releasing new films uh, every week, a lot of them some great Marvel choices. And actually today, the 10th, is uh, the debut of X-Men Days of Future Past on Disney Plus. It was available when I woke up this morning. I already downloaded it on my phone. So definitely go check out that film. You know, it was it was awesome. 
Uh, I loved it at the time. It still holds up great. It's bringing in uh, the mutants, right, from the past and the future, um, new characters. And, guys, who are the, who's the big villain in that film? Right? It is the Sentinels. So we see them in that great opening scene from the future timeline. and then That's interesting. X-Men stuff making it to Disney+. Plus. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm just happy they always had the X-Men cartoon. Yeah, but uh, he's talking about the movies now. Yeah. yeah. Maybe New Mutant someday. Team of Days of Future Past. Uh, our two esteemed experts here, Jesse and Dwight, are going to talk us through some of the past Sentinel toys and maybe some of the future Sentinel toys that we have coming. And I know, you know, as we were prepping for this call, what we wanted to talk about, Jesse has some really cool, never before seen, unused toy biz designs that he's going to walk us through right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for having me here today. This is awesome. Um, I didn't get the memo about the purple shirt. Uh, so for my choo choo uh, engineer. Marvel Legends or, or X Men, and in general, if, you, if you've seen these figures, you remember that card art. But there were a lot of designs or that kind of the classic like team. Uh, like this version of uh, the mm -hmm. Beast. Um, so uh, there was, and lots of other characters too. But <laughs> the one that I want to bring to everyone's attention. I like that design too. Um, mm -hmm. In 1991, yeah. they had uh, come up with a thought that they could do uh, the Sentinel. So I'm trying to get the glare on it. There we go. Um, to do the Sentinel in a larger scale. And it's kind of hard to see the scale here. I'm going to show you this piece right here. It really gives you the sense of how massive it would have been back in 1991. Uh, now, like a lot of toys, and Dwight and Ryan can both back me up on this, lots of designs happen that never get brought to market. Um, and I always I always love the toys that you know don't get made. Uh, and I, I thought it was really cool to it, take this opportunity to share that. Uh, with everybody on live broadcast. Um, we did eventually make a, a Sentinel figure, I think around 1993 or 1994, uh, for Toy Biz. Um, and it came out really well. In fact, um, I know Ryan got one, but I, a couple of years ago at Comic-Con, I saw someone cosplay as the Toy Biz Sentinel uh, and had action figures all over him. It was one of the uh, coolest cosplays that I'd, I'd seen in a long time. I saw that guy. That was cool. Yeah, speaking of that, you know, um, that was a, a beloved playset. So while that cool design may have never made it into our toy box as kids, something we did get in 1994, and I just got this on eBay. I was waiting by the mailbox all day like a, like a little kid, but I was so happy that it came. So this is the 1994 uh, X-Men Sentinel playset that has all of these great features. It has, you know, a... Um, a retractable claw to grab the figures. It has a Are they re? Is that what we're getting? The whole playset, be possibly because that box is pristine. Well, it's collectible, <laughs> but it has got some sharp edges, huh? Oh yeah, and no yellowing. I mean, I see a lot of those at the toy shop. I was thought about unboxing it uh, on this stream, but this is still actually mint sealed and packed so i can't bring my, myself to do it but definitely go check out you know youtube our our friend uh at uh, toy shiz uh recently posted a um <laughs> yesterday actually a uh, unboxing video of that sentinel so definitely check that out that was an awesome first sentinel in 1994 then you flash forward to 2005 i believe uh, once the marvel legends line was up and running and the second build a figure ever after Galactus was, in fact, the Sentinel. And that's something that Jesse you know, brought to life, and it's, it's still great and holds up wonderfully to this day. And I think yeah. you guys have that somewhere in your stash there too, right? Uh, this was sculpted by Dave Cortez, and we actually took the design uh, that Mark Silvestri had done. Um, and the one thing I loved about this was that um, in the comics, uh, you know, this was a really unique 
I don't recommend If they're not giving us a sentinel or, for HasLab or something like that, that then this is really a red herring. They already talked about how the sentinel is going to be a build a figure, and it's going to, well, they haven't confirmed that, but they hinted at it. They said they're going to have the biggest build a figure ever. They never said it was a sentinel. Right, they haven't, they haven't said it was a leg. One, one of the, yeah, one well, here. maybe we'll find out here soon. We were about I remember that video that showed Jubilee being as targeted. As as possible. We talking about it. And if you have one of these, and you look at all these little sinewy parts, those are all guitar strings uh, from basses. We just went to a music store, grabbed a bunch of gauge guitar strings, and put them in there and strung them around. So, um, uh, you know, that's how you spell oh, on, I got to mark sinewy off of my HasLab bingo card. <laughs> All right, and then after um, after the Legends Six Inch Sentinel in 2005, when Hasbro started partnering with Marvel to make toys, and uh, before the Six Inch Legends business really exploded, it was all about the three and three quarter Marvel Universe Sentinel, and Dwight and team uh, designed that one as well. Yeah, um, and Jesse, one day you're gonna have to tell me what the deco count was on your uh, build a figure Sentinel, because that's one of the most insane. Uh, the painted action figures I've I've ever seen, and I'm, it's, I'm sure it's well into the multiple of hundreds for Deco on that thing. It's crazy. Um, all right, but yeah, uh, jumping over to some Hasbro era stuff. Actually, there's one more too, Ryan. I found uh, going through my office this week. We made a really adorable for the world's cutest Sentinel for the superhero yeah. squad line. So do I have that one? My, um, yeah. Okay. Favorite, it's uh, super cute. Line that I worked on in the Marvel days at Hasbro. So. Uh, but going from there, we wanted something bigger, and one of my teammates worked on a Marvel Universe three and quarter inch Sentinel that was debuted. Weird, your your live stream was like believe ten was seconds before mine. I was like, "What? Uh, what's cute?" <laughs> and, uh, it was Usually, massive, massive you join in where it's giant, going, so it's kind of uh, weird that yeah. you're slightly behind. My internet's just ten seconds faster though. Quite impressive. Yeah. But, um, well, you guys are that much further east than me, so you're just getting it a little bit. Yeah, quicker. we're closer. That's it. <laughs> Uh, the same figure redecoed for the main line, and then um, and it worked great for our three and quarter inch line. And this was about the same scale uh, as Jesse's toy biz build a figure. Um, this one had electronics in his chest. It had voice uh, 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 commentary. <laughs> it had. LED oh, he even has line. purple flowers over to the right as well. That's detail. Yeah, I could just be spotting all kinds of purple stuff. <laughs> confirmation yes. mm -hmm. uh, for Amazon and this version came with a Days of Future Past inspired uh, Logan type figure um, and it was great and we loved it for the time but we always felt we could do a little bit uh, more and something a little bit more special uh, if we had the opportunity to do so yeah I actually I was trying to ruffling around in the Oh. Yeah, I have that, I have that, I that purple one came out before the the X Men really cool. thing, so, though. That was the San Diego Comic Con exclusive first. Uh, over the years here with that uh, history lesson. So earlier this mm -hmm. year at our fan media day down in New York, we t we concluded our Legends presentation with a uh, a teaser featuring Jubilee. And I love the comment that people were saying uh, it's going to be a giant Jubilee has lab, which is not quite, but uh, that was pretty funny. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, we had our first fan first Friday uh, event talking, you know, Spider-Man vintage and, and other type of effects. And then Dwight had probably the largest Easter egg ever in a presentation, uh, the, the gray piece down there. So, you know, where we're heading with this. So, you know, through through great partnership with our with our friends uh, at Marvel, uh, we are pleased to announce the has lab. Marvel Legends 2020 project officially, and we worked on a fun little video that uh, we'll let do the talking for the next 60 seconds. So cue that video. Okay, guys, here it is. Our suspicion's correct. Um, wow. Over 26 inches tall. Wow. 72 points of articulation. Wow. The 6 inch Wolverine, the Legend of Wolverine, barely doesn't even come up to his knees. Why do I see him holding it? 
Ooh, LED chest and eyes. Wow. Yay, leaking batteries. 6,000 <laughs> backers needed by <laughs> August 24th. Oh, wow, classic head. Half? How I'm, much, how I'm, much, how I'm, much? I'm saying 349 Not bad. That was $200 bad less than all. I was thinking. 349 is not bad at all. How many are you getting, Justin? At I'm least one. Two. Yeah. Yeah, two is still under a grand, right? So that's yeah, 700. very reasonable. Yeah. And I mean, you've got a Sentinel statue behind you. Is that behind Jesse Falcon, like next to the Hulk? What the hell is that? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so to work on this project with uh, you and Jesse and all of the rest of our extended team at Hasbro and Marvel. Um, I think it's definitely going to be the pinnacle to a lot of people's collect uh, collections. And uh, I, for one, was super jazzed. How about you, Jesse? Yeah, you know, I just remember walking into Toy Fair, uh, I think it was three years ago, uh, and seeing the Jabba skip down. Unlock it. It hit 7,000. Mm -hmm. so. This is insane. And then understand the program and what you guys found, what, between the two of you, like six? <laughs> what? what was the barge? Was the barge 5,000 or? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, 5,000 units, but it was more expensive. Right. And a space consideration. Yeah, I'm happy with this price. I thought it was going to be more. I was guessing 550. And um, uh, it's something I'm, I'm so excited about. Um, 72 points for articulation. I think that is an all-time record. Uh, I don't think it has 72 points. Any company, does it? Any Marvel, any How many articulation uh, points do you think human body have? Uh, but, yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> um, and Less as you get older. But, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are complaining in the comments, though, about yeah. being out of work. And only having to August in this pandemic is not to display, so display a sentinel. I do. I'm uh, I'm the one who makes you guys all jelly because I have the only uh, painted version here uh, uh, with me uh, hidden in my basement. And what I w did with it is this is kind of I'm gonna do this little slow uh, pan with my uh, laptop over here. Oh, that's glorious! Hey, he has a Spider-Man Mighty Mug, the classic one over there. I know. Maybe I there's hope. hope. Oh. oh. Oh my God! Wow, uh, the the perfect action figure embodiment of action figure and diorama all mixed in one. Because as you can see, you can have piles of your X Men uh, climbing all over him, uh, battling him. Uh, everybody, any mutant is going to want to join up to try to take down this, this figure. And we got some pictures. We'll show you in, in a minute. But I want to show you the the proof of scale. Here is. Uh, Hard to wrap your head around it. Those are six inch figures coming up to it. Yeah. <laughs> I want him to do like a car video where he brings in a close figure, close up and just pans. <laughs> wow. Double. Uh, the, the figure does a lot of speaking for me. Uh, it, it takes some of the pressure off of me because I think the thing is going to uh, blow you guys away when you get it in hand and you know take some of the figures off so you can see them a little bit better this thing is just going to dwarf anything ever had in a in a collection so we're probably going to figure out a way to attach so it action of, uh, to of a comic-con set up those those two sweaty God, days um, on building up like the diorama that, that all the fans enjoy you know like we don't we don't have around like we got beat up oh yeah legends yet but uh this sentinel kind of serves all that purpose you know and i think it's gonna it looks can't wait to get one too, Dwight, and start posing it out. I've got my X-Men lined up behind me, so that's going to be great. So you guys have seen the scale a little bit. We want to share with you some uh, closer look images. Uh, so first up, here's our classic three-turn view. Thanos copter? Is that what they're teasing? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You can see how his fingers, uh, all five on each hand, um, multiple points of articulation there uh, with the tentacle as well for scale. And then just again to, to get really specific on how tall he is, he measures in at 669 millimeters, which is 26.3 inches tall. Um, but you compare wow. Sentinel that we you know did previously, the Days of Futures Past box set one, and then you could just see the difference there. Um, Somebody in the comments said that's as big as their one and a half year old child. Um, yeah. yeah, Dwight, talk about some of the posability. We have some shots um, that uh, our, our good friend Dave uh, took. Come on, second stimulus check. Daddy needs a third sentinel. 
<laughs> from two years of development on the largest, most articulated thing we've ever done on the Marvel line. So like uh, Ryan said, we have around 72 points of articulation in this thing. So it has everything that you would expect from a traditional Marvel Legends figure, just super, super, super sized. Um, it has a inverted ab crunch. It has yeah, the detail on his abs is really good. This is a total day one order for me. I want to see how big those numbers get day one. Yeah. Uh, it has yeah. Somebody in the comments said, please don't have a limit. I need five. <laughs> five would be awesome, but man, space. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to have their own bedroom, right? Yeah. You know that meme? I think I should make one of Mar of me lying in bed. Marjorie's on the floor. This sentinel is next to me. I <laughs> Don't know if I could be more proud of uh, where the, the team uh, got this item to because everybody put in a lot of mammoth effort uh, over the last. Uh, How much was that years. one that we got at, really at Comic Con that one year? Uh, big time. 120, something like that? Uh, really yeah, it was over 100. I think, I mean, I think those Galactus was 80 ish to 100 ish when it came out. Accessory. Which means the Sentinel's Ooh, tentacle he's got a tentacle. is taller than our previous Sentinel figure. It's sinewy, remember? Uh, and this is a <laughs> massive wire bendy. Uh, we know you uh, fanboys love your wire bendies and fangirls so that you can wrap up all your other action figures and do all the cool stuff you want. You know, we thought we talked about doing sculpted uh, different variations, but we thought let's give you the Parker, you love a bendy. creative control of doing whatever you want with them. So, yeah, he's got a massive tentacle that you can use to wrap up. Uh, one or two or maybe even three action figures. Uh, we got Wolverine on the screen. I have a Deadpool hanging upside down at my house. So you can have a lot of fun with this massive piece and it can plug into either of his uh, primary hands. Yeah, so there we have the the offering there. Um, Je Jesse talked a little bit about it, uh, the kind of the history of this. So just for kind of a, a behind the scenes look, yeah, we've been working on this project for for well over two years. We had a couple of different stops, stops and starts. We wanted to get it's it right. gotta come with a figure, right? It's a lot of fun sitting in these meetings. I would think so. The types of things we could do. Um, we, we considered but a lot of options before deciding on the set. I think they'd we did so probably we wait to do a boost halfway through, like they did with the with the barge. Yeah, that's when they did the act face, wasn't it? Yeah. Sugar Man wave. Um, so it was a really big year for X Men. We, we had looked forward to you know doing an X all X Men diorama uh, at Comic Con to share with you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, th working having so long a runway on this has really allowed the team to explore different aesthetics and solve for some of the engineering challenges for such a massive figure. Um, Dwight and Jesse, why don't we talk through a little bit about what particular model, if any, and, and inspiration is behind this design of the Sentinel? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, and actually, there's one thing I forgot to, to, to uh, showcase here. On the big guy, he's not just a standard figure. Oh, he's got a couple of awesome LEDs in it. I just want to point out, i got a sideshow maquette back here of a Sentinel, and it's going to be smaller than what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, no, that sort of totally reminds me of is that sideshow maquette. Right, he's got some pivot up and down, and I can't fully <laughs> pose this model because it's just a model, it's not production. And I don't want to damage my little friend here, but it's got some awesome uh, detailing in and under his uh, reactor plate, as well as the ability to turn the lights on and off just by the press of the, the chest uh, reactor. So this version is... How do you change uh, the batteries? That's what I want to know. By, uh, what is the package? Of X, like, do you, can you remove it from the package and not destroy the package and get the batteries out? Well, I mean, they're gonna roll all this stuff out. Like, that's how they that's how they keep the the interest going. Is like one week it's like, hey, you get a book. One week it's like, this is what the box looks like. Oh, there's an additional figure. And I imagine overseas collectors are going to be kind of hosed like they have been in the past because they can't ship there, they can't do the business there. Yeah, there's no good distribution, it seems, for that. I wonder if they'll do like they did for the barge. If it gets funded, they'll send some over there, but you don't get the book. Mm -hmm. Something like yeah. that. I haven't followed it, so. Unicron to see did they have a book or what they ended up doing with him. 
gorgeous. It, it reminds Did that me make it? of a classic Sentinel, but it has the Unicron. Modern Unicron. I, head. I think the only thing that didn't make it was Cookie Monster. Yeah. Cookie mm -hmm. Monster, yeah. But they like extended so Unicron and Extra some, Month, uh, and it had some, kind of fill in some of the real from last the, uh, day uh, push to get over the you line. Know, amazing art, mm -hmm. just kind of interpret it as there are some conspiracy a, theories. A, uh, really <laughs> there were about the sail barge too. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it, 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 we got lucky in that uh, um, you know this project. Yeah, with the sail barge, I felt like. It might not make it and get a little nervous. I feel like this one, no, this no problem. Sure thing for, in my mind, at three fifty piece. Dog. Yeah, I mean, so many people are going to order more than one at that price, and then there's going to be a lot of people who can't afford it. And I completely understand. This is a crap time for me too, guys. It is not a good time for big expenditure, but I'm not going to miss this. No. For us, so we got really lucky there. And the cool thing about this book is uh, you also can't forget that we have um, a House of X Powers of Ten wave of legends coming next year as well. So uh, about the time that this guy is going to be ready to ship to your house, you'll have a whole pile of new uh, mutants and mutant hunters to uh, fill out the rest of your toy ranks. we got some brand new characters in that wave and some awesome updates of some of your favorites. Yeah, and a great build of figure. And a great build of figure. The, uh, House of X wave. So yeah, get ready, guys. Um, we really pulled out all the stops to try to make this Hazlab Sentinel the ultimate Marvel Legends troop builder, and we wanted to include a standard six-inch figure uh, with it, kind of like the, the previous set. Um, but we weren't sure what to what to include, right? Is it we, we kicked around ideas like Shadow Cat, a Wolverine, or what have you? Um, but some something we learned from the Days of Future Past set was that. Uh, for those fans who bought several Sentinels um, to, to really army build out a, a, a collection there, they were stuck with a lot of the identical Days of Futures past Wolverine, which you really you really only need one. You're not going to do with three and four of them. So we, we thought to um, if we could take a different approach with the HasLab version and Tony Colella, who you guys all know, uh, the master model artist on Legends, had the idea to include a six inch figure that could also be a troop builder to itself. So um, what we are able to do here is include a first ever uh, Legends figure, Bastion here, um, with an alternate head that if you had multiple Bastions lying around and you only need one. That hair is amazing on that. I mean, that's different than what they've ever done. Right. So, and you know, it looks you know, pretty you know, damn good. We're going to go out and support this thing big time, and I'm sure you guys are going to buy three, four, or five of these things. Oh, you know, man. You, you have <laughs> shelf. The cool thing about these guys is in their size, not only that figure is going to be probably 150 uh, just for itself when they hit eBay. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Think about how much that yak face sold for. for yeah. People who didn't want the barge, That's but they want true. every figure. Yeah. Your younglings, you know, there's a lot of stuff you're going to be able to do with this massive uh, figure. And then, you know, got this super creepy uh, Bastion figure to go with it. Once again, get my big mug out of the way. So he looks oh, cool. Man, that figure makes me think I'm in for three. <laughs> I mean, if they're a troop builder figure, you gotta have more than one, and then you need right. the Bastion head. <laughs> troop build. Um, you know, everything has a home and a place. Nothing will go to waste, which we know is super important for all of you. Uh, absolutely um, wonderful uh, super fans. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of works backwards. They're saying it's like a troop builder. So in case you get more than one, you don't have multiples of a single figure. But now it's like, I need multiples of that single figure. I wonder if they'll re offer the single figure without the Bastion head later, maybe, or without the other head. I mean, the Yak Face came out on a regular card, but a different card and without some of the accessories that they did for the sure. barge. Yeah, just with the Prime Head, you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I mean, maybe in that Troop Builder 1499 line. That'd be awesome. That'd be kicking the balls to everyone who bought $350 Sentinels for extras, but... Things like that. So each Sentinel backer will receive 70,000 Marvel Insider points. And redeeming these points will also unlock a digital copy of X-Men number 14 from 1965, I believe. 
um, that featured the first appearance of the Sentinels. And you can use these points on, on any of those um, rewards. This is interesting. Something that I'm, I'm pretty excited for to offer is that a one-month trial subscription to the Marvel um, Unlimited. 70,000 per Sentinel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need some puzzle quest levels. There, if you aren't already a right. unlimited um, subscriber. So thank you to Marvel Insider for helping us out with that. And um, 75 that. Uh, sent out via a code um, once the project is funded at the conclusion of the crowdfund period. So I know you're all you know, wanting to know some of the, the logistics here. So the price on the Sentinel is $349.99. Uh, which includes shipping to the continental U.S. and we're it's going to be going live today. Uh, if it's not already up there, very soon. And, uh, oh yes, I know what you're doing this afternoon, here, Arnie. On August 24th, and we need 6, Editing and now playing, and buying some Sentinels. Uh, when it is, we will begin shipping in fall 21. And then, thank you for any uh, international fans tuning in all around the world. Uh, we did want to just throw it out there that this initiative in the U.S. and Canada is only... I don't remember with the sale bars. Did you get charged right away or just when funding hit? When it, when it gets funded, you get charged. Okay. So you have to make sure that your credit card's not expired. Okay. Retail isn't select market, so just enjoy working on it. Um, and because of that, we wanted to, to build in some, some incentives into this. So we have, we have this mapped out ahead of time. So as a bonus for each additional thousand backers, uh, there will be an unlockable add on piece or feature or something that all the backers will receive at no additional charge. So that's three additional tiers. We need 6,000 to get the project, to bring it to life, starting at 7,000 then 8,000 and 9,000 backer level, there'll be something else we'll throw in for everyone. So uh, we'll we'll, we will reveal each of those tiers as the, the threshold is met. So the faster that all the great Marvel Legends fans uh, and the community bands together to, to show their support for this project, the quicker we can debut those bells and whistles. Uh, so that was a lot to go through. Um, definitely check out the Hasbro Pulse product page. It has everything we talked about with a lot of images and a lot more information. Uh, Jesse, Dwight, any additional closing thoughts here? Thank you for doing this. This is awesome. I appreciate you guys having me here. Dwight, Ryan, it's great to see you guys. Everybody at home, be safe, wear a mask, uh, and uh, stay healthy. Yeah, and for me, I just realized that the backers ends really close to my birthday. So for all of you guys who support this, I'll consider it. You guys all giving me a birthday present, which is just, you know, I'm sure that's really high on your list of, you know, what you're trying to accomplish with this. So, you know, it'll be a birthday present to me once this thing gets greenlit and we can actually make this massive thing. But it'll be a birthday present that uh, the Hasbro team will be able to share with you. So it kind of, you know, it's a full circle, amazing, wonderful thing. Um, yeah, he's... He's awesome. I hope you guys love him as much as we loved working on him, and I hope you guys all come out and support him in, in a big, big way. Yes, please. That's right. So thanks for tuning in again. Show your support. Back the Sentinel. Stay tuned to The Pulse. We've got a lot of great more, um, you know, Fan First Friday type events and reveals going on in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months, so stay tuned. Um, unless we have anything else, we'll, we'll wrap it up. I think we're pretty... Oh, wait a minute. Hey, Ryan. And all this carnage in my office, I realized there's this thing under the Sentinel's foot. Look at this. I found this thing. A little book. Oh, it is. Ah, it's tiny. Something. I know. It's really tiny. It's got some, you know, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Weird. Weird. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Go check out Days of Future Past tonight. Bye, guys. You recognize Bye. that book, Justin? No. Okay, because I was I was asking. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Okay. That was great, guys. They're still live. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I'm right there with you. Like that price is surprisingly affordable. I mean, like Arnie said, it's like it's not the greatest time in human history for a big item, but geez, I was I was expecting more than that, you know, as far as price goes. But um I'm I'm excited. Like I'm I'm excited that the, it sounds like they have this a little bit more figured out than the barge because they've already announced the figure. They announced the book. They announced that they're going to have stretch goals. And I feel like with the bards, those things were either if they were planned ahead of time, they weren't rolled out until those certain points were hit in time. So, yeah, this is this is exciting. I'm, I'm excited that we're getting this huge Sentinel. And I'm hoping that I heard him right. that The fingers are articulated. I think when we say I don't want to discount collectors who you know not everybody can drop 350 dollars on a toy and even without covid and the high unemployment and everything it's going to be outside people's price range when we're saying it's a great price it's that we expected it so much more based upon the price of unicron based upon the price of the barge this is cookie monster price <laughs> yeah I mean, and it's it's about the same as buying two waves of figures over the course of a year. You know, I mean, a, a wave of figures at 20, 21 bucks a pop and on the average seven figures in a wave, you're at 140, 150 there. So two, two waves, 300 bucks. I mean, it adds up. I didn't even think about it like that, but you're right. And yeah, two waves and a deluxe figure and you're at a Sentinel. Mm hmm. The army builder figure on there, though, man. The army builder. <laughs> I'm getting you. So, how many are you ordering, Justin, today? I'm, I'm going to start with one and then watch the goals come up. And I'm sure by the time August 24th rolls around, there will be at least two on in my cart. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is, you don't have to order today. It's not like there's 6,000 and they run out. You, they're going to make however many people order over the next month and a half. So you can order on the 23rd and get the same as now. But if you wait till the 23rd, will others just not buy because it looks like it's not going to hit its funding goal or something? It's. I feel like I want to buy two now because I know I want to. And I really want to give it a push towards the funding goal because I want to. <laughs> so that means it needs I, to make the goal. I honestly don't see this not making it. The only thing that would hinder it is our terrible economy right now and a quarter of the United States being out of work. I think otherwise, this would be funded in no time. Yeah. Makes me wonder how many Marvel Legends collectors are out there. You know, I've been talking with Star Wars sites and we've been bandying about numbers of how many Star Wars collectors there are in the six inch and the three and three quarter inch lines that, you know, have some pretty good approximations, but I have no idea how many Marvel Legends collectors there are. I don't know. Oh, I think over it, a thousand think might be more. just watching that live stream in the middle of a work day. Yeah. I think there might be more Marvel Legends collectors than Star Wars collectors, to be honest with you. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty hot property. It's selling for. I mean, that's what has been said. All of the recent Hasbro stock reports is Star Wars does okay these days, but Marvel Legends is the number one product in their licensed lines. You know, not the stuff Hasbro made up like G.I. Joe and whatnot. Right. Yeah, let's... Let's hope that it gets funded. I mean, I, I think it will get funded, but let's let's make Dwight's birthday wish come true, right? <laughs> Dwight's birthday wish is because he works there. He gets a free Sentinel on a prototype. He already got a free one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'll get to keep the prototype. Maybe he will. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. Thank you guys for watching us. Be if you're watching this on YouTube, let me just go through. Be sure to comment, click like, and subscribe. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> and we put out a new Marvelicious Toys podcast yesterday, video. You can catch that if you haven't. And we will be back soon. Right on. See you all later.
Thank you for listening to this episode of Marvelicious Toys. There's even more Marvelicious content at our website, MarveliciousToys.com. You can see pictures of the products we discussed, find checklists for collectibles, and read articles on Marvel movies, comics, and collecting. It's all at MarveliciousToys.com. <laughs>